Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, today I'm planning to do this uh, parity party puzzle by Philip Bloom called The Chromosomes. Um, I'll explain the rules in a moment. First of all, um, I realise that those of you who like seeing classic Sudoku solved and the techniques in those um, have been lacking for a few days. Uh, I was about to say that we'll get back to that tomorrow, but I've just heard that Ashish Kumar, who prepared the astonishing series of puzzles that were four odd and four even um, linked Sudokus that we've solved over the last four days, has prepared a special puzzle for our Patreons. Um, yeah, actually, we'll put that on, on Patreon. So hopefully we can return to classic Sudoku here. But his special puzzle is another one one off that can be solved as either odd or even and uh, looking forward to that. So back to today's puzzle. Now, as I said, this is a concept I think that, that Philip Bloom has developed called Parity Party. And in this, the numbers outside the grid represent the sum of the digits seen from that point. So if we look at this 23 looking down here, until the first time that parity, which means being odd or even, changes and including that time. So for instance, this 23 could be six, eight, nine. That's possible. That adds up to 23 and it's even, even, and then the first odd would make it six, eight, nine. And that would be 23. Now the other constraint that he's added in, also not a normal one, is there a number of lines, I think possibly representing um, chromosome strands here, that are that add up to 23. The digits along them add up to 23 and each in a unique way. Um, I think the way Philip expressed that was each of these lines has unique content and I'm going to take that to mean that if one of them is 689, another of them can't be exactly those three digits, 689. So those are the two constraints that we're operating on as well as normal Sudoku rules in this puzzle. Obviously, I think the relevance of chromosomes is not just the strings, but that there are 23 paired chromosomes in a human, in human DNA. Is that right? I, you can correct me on the science. And all of the clues outside the grid, therefore, are 23. And in the grid, we have 23, 23, 23 and 46, which I suppose represents the pairs um, of chromosomes together in the old double helix arrangement. Um, so apologies if my uh, knowledge of microbiology is a little bit off, but you can correct me in the comments if I've said something wrong there. So let's get cracking and see how we solve um, this chromosomes parity party puzzle. So. Um, let's start with that notion of 6, 8, 9 adding up to 23. Now this um, strand is, or the line, is all in one box and it's three digits so that has to be 6, 8 and 9. Pretty sure that that must be right. Now that means that the other two three digit strands aren't 6, 8 and 9 they must therefore contain a pair. I think they could be nine, nine, and five, eight, eight, and seven, or seven, seven, and nine. So this one here must be a seven or five, because we don't go below five in those sets. Um, so this would either be five, oh, well, it can't be eight. Was it eight, eight, and five? No. 16, eight, eight, and seven. It can't be that. It could be nine, it can't be nine, nine, and five. So that must be a seven. So because these ones have to obviously be in the same column and box, so they have to be different. But one of them now must be a seven because we've used the only non-paired one. And the other must be a, I can't do this maths, a nine. Seven and seven and nine is 23. Okay, so this is either 
we've used the double seven pair. We've still got either a double eight pair or a double nine pair for this three cell strand. So that's either eight or nine with another of those up here. But I don't know which way around yet. Now, let's look at the long strand. What is the absolute minimum it could be? Because this is a very long strand. So if we had one, two, and three in that box, that would be six. This could be one, seven, three there, 10, one here, 11, 13, 16. And if we had one, two, and three again, that would be 22. And it adds up to 23. So it's only got one more, um, a digit somewhere along it that is one higher than those minimal possibilities. Now it can't be this one, because that can't be two. It can't be this one, because that can't be two. So we can fill in the ones there. Actually, that gives us a one down here. Um, and in one of these two boxes, it must be one, two, four. And in the other one, it must be one, two, three. So whichever way round that is, there must be a one in this box. I mean, I think I'm gonna fill in one, two, three, and four as the only, ugh, the only possibilities for these cells. Let's get rid of that one. Um, that one can't be a one either. And that's an interesting observation. Um, I haven't really used the outside parity party clues yet at all. Now this four has to add to 23. We've already got 16 in the box. That's 39. The other three cells have to add up to six. So they're obviously one, two, and three. Um, and these ones on the strand here are four, five, six, and eight. So get rid of a six from that. Right, I'm gonna probably have to use these outside clues now. Let's start here. Now, as I mentioned, six, eight, nine is a possibility. And that could be a possibility here as well. I think that, well, it's clearly the only possibility that can be done in three cells. If we went to four, four cells is definitely possible, but if it was three, yeah, three odds and an even, or three evens and an odd, four cells is always possible. Five cells cannot be one of those combinations. It can't be four odd squares and then an even, because that would add to an even number, not 23. So none of these 23s are a five cell string. Uh, six is too long, I think. One, two, three, four, five, eight. Yeah, I mean, how would you get five? Well, you can't have five even numbers and the five odd numbers add up to 25, so that's too much. So six is too long. Five, oh, five doesn't work as, sorry, right. Five doesn't work as four odd and then even, but five could work as four even, which would be four, eight, six, and two, adding up to 20, and then three. So it could be that here. This could be a four, six, eight combination, but also, it could be an odd combination adding to 21 with the two to come to make it up to 23. Now that would be uh, nine, seven, and five. Yeah, so it's either the maximum odd digits or the maximum even digits. Now here, this has to add up to 23 too. Now it can't be six, eight, nine anymore because that would borrow one from each of the possible, at least one from each of the possible strings here. So it's got to be a four or five digit cell. It can't be the five digit one because that has to be the four evens and then a three. And we couldn't have a three here. So it must be four digits. And therefore, I think it must be three even digits. No, I don't know that way yet, but 
Um, oh, it's got to include the three, hasn't it? Oh, that's good. Okay, so it is three even digits. And then, uh, sorry, three odd digits, and then an even one. So it could be three, nine, seven, and a four. No, that's not possible. So this has got to be six or eight. This includes a three. What else does it include? Um, if it's six, it has to add to 17, nine, 14. So that would be nine and five. And if this is the eight, this adds to 15, including a three. Um, that must be seven and five, right. So the four, which can't be in these three cells because of that four, has to be up here. These must be four, three even numbers. So I'm going to take out five, seven, nine. That's four, six, eight, plus two, plus three makes 23. Um, here we still don't know which way round that goes, but at least we've established those. Now that eight being in that row, that sorts this one out. That has to be a nine. And this must include a nine. We needed a pair on this 18 and five. So that's a nine, five pair there. Um, now where else can we go for something useful? One and two must both be down here. One of these is a one for what it's worth. I don't think it helps as much, but, and all of these are one, five, seven as a triple. No, that's not one, obviously. Um, these include two and one. Ooh, that nearly interacts well with that, but not quite, because there is one other digit, either, I can't remember, either five or seven, I think, in this row as well. Now, what, okay, what about these 23s? Oh, that's interesting, because the fourth digit is always even. So one of them could be two, four, six, eight, and a three at the end of it, but not both of them, because that would be far too many even numbers in this box. So one of them at least must be three odd numbers. Look, given the numbers that we have on this strand, none of them can be six, eight, nine. It can't be three digits, just in case you were wondering about that. So one of them is three odd numbers. One of them is three even numbers. Um, whichever the three even numbers is ends in a three down at the bottom. The three odd numbers would then end in a four, six or eight. That gives quite a few possibilities, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it does. Now three even, three odd. This group must be two odd and one even. That's odd. That would be three odds in the row. No, that's not necessarily getting us anywhere. Now, is there a way of knowing what the three odds are or the three evens? Well, the three evens have to be the other numbers from two, four, six, and eight. Now down here, this must include, yes, look, this strand has to, which is four, five, six, eight, only has one odd number in it. So one of those must be even. So these four can't be even. That would be too many even numbers in the column. So the four even numbers must be down here. Let's get, so we've got two, four, six, and eight in this stretch followed by a three to make it up to 23. So that's how that works. Two, four, six, eight, three. This one must be the five. These other three must all be even numbers. That's got to be right, yeah. Um, sorry, just checking my logic as I go along. So we've got four, eight, and six there as a triple. But these are three odd numbers, which together with that add to 23. Don't know which way round they go yet. Um, oh, did we not get anything else? Two, four, six, eight, three, seven, nine, five. This is the one that we at least did get out of that. 
Um, hmm. It felt like it was really going somewhere for a second. Right, we've got other 23s we could use. I don't quite know which ones to turn to first. Okay, this is interesting because that's odd and this is odd. So the parity either changes here or here. I think we worked out that four odds and an even doesn't work. So the parity must change here. This must be six, eight and nine. Wow. It's an odd constraint. It really does, you know, kind of mess with what you're thinking about. Um, yeah, maybe focusing on where the parity must change. So this one must start odd, odd there. It's clearly not 689, obviously, so this has to be odd as well. And we've got 1 and 9 used. This must be 5 and 3. So these are a 2-4 pair. I'm going to fill that in for now. It might be helpful later. But concentrate on this. They add up to 15 already. So we can finish with an 8. I think we have to. We can't go one more odd or we get this impossible four odds and an even. So that's 8. Wow, okay, that's 6 now. Um, that's 5, 7 or 9, which is interesting here because it forms a triple with those. So this is 8, 4 at the end. Actually, one of those is 6, 8, so we know which way round they go. Um, this isn't 6. So it's five or seven. This must be the six. That four can come out of those two cells as possibles. Um, there we go. Six, seven, nine. That can't be five or seven because they're already in the same row. So that's one, two or three. Aha! We've got a one, two, three triple there. I wasn't expecting this. That makes this one the four. This is the one, two, four set. So we can work out which way around they go. This is the one, two, three set. So that's two. This is three. That's one. Suddenly we've got real traction in the grid. Three is ruled out of those two. It must be down here. In fact, those two are resolved by that one, two, and one. The two, four pairs sorted out. Suddenly everything's becoming very gettable. Still haven't used... Oh, we've used that one. We haven't used this one. I must be able to use that now. Four and two is six. Can't add the nine. That would change the parity. Plus eight is 14. The parity changes here. That must be a seven to make it 23. Six, 14, 23. Yeah. No, nine. Do your maths. Four. 6, 14 plus 9 is 23. I do apologise about an arith arithmetic error there. Nearly. Um, that's 9. This is 6 or 8. Actually, that hasn't been resolved yet. This isn't 4, so the 4 in this box is here. That's not 4 for what it's worth. That might be worth something, actually. That's not 2. Um, now this one is either, tw sorry, either 17 plus 6 or 15 plus 8. If it was 17, this would be 9 and 7. If it was 15, this would be 9 and 5. It can't be that because we've got 5 and 9 there. So that's 7 there, 9 there, 9, 10, 17. This is 6. I I love some of these deductions. They're really surprisingly fun. That's now five. Um, that fixes the middle box. That's not five. Five's down here. That is not five. We've got, in fact, that's nine. We've got two and seven to go in there. Eight and six has been resolved. That fixes that one. Three and five's now been resolved too. Not this 7-9 yet, but not to worry, that will come very soon. Ah, oh, look, we haven't used this 23 clue. Don't know if it's going to be necessary, but clearly the parity changes at 8 there. So these add up to 15. I think it's the 9 and 5, therefore, must go in here. Yeah. 
Again, just checking my maths because I don't want to make those silly errors that would spoil the solution. Um, we can fill in 8 and 7 down there. The 1, 7 pairs resolved. Um, we've got 1, 2, 3 down the end column. 4 and 7 there. What an intriguing puzzle. I mean, quite complicated setup, but it's been great fun the way it's worked out here. Um, 6, 8, 4. Okay, lovely. And 5, 8 pair there. We can finish off columns 5 and 6. That's 4 or 9. What's this at the top? That's a 6. So then we can go across to 8, 6, 5, 8, 4, 9, and 7, 4. Nice puzzle, Philip. That's very entertaining. Um, first featured, I think, on Logic Masters Germany and got a very high approval rating there. So I think we knew it was going to be good. I mean, I think that is a complicated setup. I don't necessarily want to involve everybody in creating puzzles that have two constraints that take some understanding because of their novelty. But that is a nice finish. So thanks very much, Philip. Intriguing puzzle. Uh, as I said, I think we will, within the next day or so, be posting Ashish Kumar's new um, odd even puzzle on Patreon. And we'll probably be, I'll probably be back tomorrow with a, with a classic, I would imagine. So thanks very much for watching. I hope that was enjoyable. And do stay safe, please, out there. And uh, good luck to everybody. Hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now. <laughs>